Izuku looked on as they zipped past stars and planets, amazing he said as the other lanterns chuckled at the newbie lantern. As they slowed down Izuku looked outside to find a giant planet just ahead that had a strange green glow surrounding it. We're here kid, welcome to Oe home of all the green lanterns as they entered the planet's atmosphere Izuku watched in amazement. Breaking past the clouds, Izuku saw a grand city with many green lanterns flying around. Wow how many members are there? Izuku asked. About 7200 members, and you are the newest, Kilowog said as they landed in the city. Come on kid we are going to meet the guardians. Izuku was escorted through the building inside he found some many different kinds of aliens, some big, some tiny, others had different colored skin, others with more than two eyes or arms. Kilowog looked at Izuku. What's the matter kid, never seen aliens before. And no never, on my planet we don't even know if they even exist. Well I guess this answers that question, I wonder if they have quirks. What's a quirk? Kilowog asked. Oh it's like a superpower some humans develop, their powers can range from being useful in everyday life or good enough to be a hero Izuku explained. I see, so what's your quirk? asked another lantern. I I don't have one, I never developed one Izuku said with sadness in his voice. Kilowog saw the sadness in his eyes, sorry to hear that kid, but you are now part of something greater. You are now a green lantern he said as they stopped in front of a large double door. Kilowog told the other lantern they can go, all right kid it's time to meet the guardians. As the doors opened Izuku swallowed nervously, Walking into the room six large pillars stood around a platform. Kilowog walked Izuku to the center, Guardians, I have returned with the new green lantern. On the top the pillars little blue people appeared on top of the pillars, so this is the lantern. He's so young, are we sure he can actually fulfill his duty as a green lantern one of them said. I've heard of these humans, they think they rule the universe and are overly reliant on their technology. I don't believe he could be a good lantern another said. Come now, we can't judge him just because of his birth planet. What is your name boy? My name is Ganthet he said in a soft voice. I Izuku Midoriya sir he said, sweating from his forehead. Izuku Midoriya I see, we welcome you to the Green Lantern Corp, Ganthet said. I still don't like it, a human wielding a ring it's just irresponsible, another guardian said. This started an argument amongst the guardians if they should allow Izuku to keep the ring. Izuku slumped his shoulders, that's when Kilowog stepped forward, if I may guardians they turned their attention to Kilowog. When we first arrived on earth Izuku thought we were an enemy and fought us. During that little fight he managed to take down two lanterns with little effort. I know if given the right training he will become an amazing lantern. The guardians spoke amongst themselves, if this is true Kilowog then we have truly found a prodigy Ganthet looked at his fellow guardians and all nodded. We have decided Izuku Midoriya of Earth you are to train under Kilowog until you learn to properly use your powers. Izuku perked up, why yes sir, I will do my best. We will expect nothing but your best boy, however a word of warning Kilowog's training can get a bit difficult so try to stay alive and with that Ganthet and the other guardians left. Izuku was immediately taken to his new living quarters where he would train with Kilowog. After charging his ring Izuku met with Kilowog in the training grounds, all right newbie it's time to start your training. The first thing you need to know is that your constructs are only as strong as your will. Right now your constructs are weak Kilowog created a giant dumbbell that began to fall on Izuku. Izuku quickly created a platform above him stopping the dumbbell from hitting him but his legs began to shake from the pressure. Letting the construct disappear Kilowog got up to Izuku, since you already know how to fly we won't go over that but you need to learn how to handle gravity in space he said pointing his ring a bit away from Izuku and created a small black hole. Taken by surprise Izuku's feet began to drag on the floor towards the black hole, Thinking for a second Izuku created a jetpack to keep him from falling into the black hole. Izuku grunted as he pushed himself and the ring, man this is difficult. That's what you're going to feel when you travel through space, 
not even counting sons. Time to move on into combat training, but your guard up boy Kilowog said going into his fighting stance. Izuku awkwardly put up his fists, I've never been in a real fist fight in my life. I need to think about what I'm going to do before he could think about what to do Kilowog's massive fist hit Izuku in the face, sending him sliding back. I know why your constructs are weak Kilowog jumped in the air. You overthink everything, he went in for a drop kick Izuku but he quickly rolled away. You need to stop overthinking everything. Kilowog threw punch after punch, Izuku was barely able to dodge them. That is until Kilowog tripped him up, causing him to fall on his butt, you still have a lot to learn Kilowog said with his hand out. Here let me help you out. Izuku went to grab his arm, once he did a fist hit his face again, you're too trusting of people, your enemy they won't play fair and neither should you. Use every opening you find. Izuku looked more pissed off than anything else, creating a rug under Kilowog and pulled it causing him to fall face first. Yeah that sounds like good advice, thanks. Ha looks like you learn fast newbie Kilowog got up. I think we can make you into a fine green lantern. Izuku spent the next week undergoing extreme training with Kilowog, from sunrise to sunset. He even got to learn about the other lantern core, red symbolizing rage, orange, greed, yellow, fear, blue, hope, indigo, composion, and violet, love. There are two others, one the black lanterns and the other being the white lanterns, he was told to avoid the black lanterns at all cost. Kilowog was a brutal but effective teacher, his methods had some questionable moral dilemmas but no one could say he wasn't good at what he did. At times Izuku wanted to give up but all he had to do was look up and gaze upon the hundreds of stars in the sky. He reminded himself of his past, what he had to go through just to be here and with his resolve strength Izuku continued to work hard. It was now the final day of his training and he was to meet the guardians once last time before leaving. Entering the room Izuku already looked different, he showed a higher level of confidence. It looks like a week really did change you Izuku Midori Yaganthit said looking at the boy. T thank you sir Izuku said embarrassed. Izuku Midori ya from sector 2814, though your training is incomplete we chose to send you back to earth for we fear there will be a great deal of trouble in the near future to befall your planet. With the training you've done with Kilowog, you are ready to face anything that comes your way. Good luck another guardian said. Hearing his name Izuku stood straight, yes sir, thank you. On behalf of the rest of the guardians, make us proud Izuku Midoriya said Ganthet. I will do my very best guardians Izuku smiled. Good now off you go, the earth needs you and with that the guardians left, leaving Izuku with the giant central green lantern power battery. As Izuku turned to leave he heard a voice call out to him, Izuku, Izuku. Turning around he saw no one around, strange, I could have sworn I heard a voice just now, maybe I've been hit too many times in the head during training. Grabbing his things Izuku went to the launch pad outside the main building, Kilowog, and a few other green lanterns were there waiting for him, well this is it guys. Kilowog walked towards Izuku and without saying a word he drew his fist back ready to hit Izuku. Thinking fast Izuku created a catcher's mitt and caught his fist, Looks like you did learn something kid Kilowog said smiling. Well I did have an awesome teacher Izuku replied as the two shook hands. Take care of yourself kid Izuku nodded. Focusing, Izuku created a fighter jet and climbed in, I'll see you guys soon, bye. Closing the hatch the jet began to float into the air before taking off at a high rate of speed. Earth, UA entrance exam. Eureka was standing in front of a large city, this was going to be the final test to see if she was good enough to get into UA. This was simple, take down as many robots as you can to earn points 0 to 3. Taking a deep breath she calmed herself and with eyes filled with determination she was ready. Bang. As the door opened up she ran in the giant city and began to target robots, everything was going well until she began to overuse her quirk causing her to become nauseous. Taking a short break she stood on the street catching her breath, that's when the announcement was made, 
Warning Zero Pointer has now been released, better watch out. Eureka looked up to see a giant robot began to appear from the ground surpassing the buildings in height. I isnt that too much, she said as the giant robot swung its giant arms destroying part of a building sending parts of it flying towards the students. As she was standing on the street Eureka was caught by a piece of the building pinning her under it causing her to yell out in pain. Damn it my leg is crushed she said trying to pull her leg free with little success. To make matters worse the giant robot was now making her way, is that thing not going to stop? Oh no I'm going to get crushed she tried to activate her quirk but she was already at her limit. Other students ran past as she begged for help but no one heard her as they ran for their lives, D dad I'm sorry closing her eyes Eureka waited for the giant robot to crush her but it never came, all she heard was the sound of it creaking. Opening her eyes she found Izuku facing the zero pointer, man that was close wasn't it he said looking at her. Eureka looked at the robot to find it tangled in a giant green net, green lantern. Hey Eureka, sorry for not coming over for some cookies. I got caught up in some stuff he smiled. I it's fine you can just come by tonight, anyway what are you going to do about that, she pointed at the robot. Oh easy Izuku let the net construct disappear to Eureka's shock. What are you doing? It's going to crush us. Izuku smiled. Not on your life, pointing the ring at it Izuku created a small bullet and launched it at the robot. Piercing its body the robot showed no signs of slowing down. Wait for it. Boom, a large explosion rattled the examination site, Izuku created a giant jar around the robot encasing it and containing the fireball. Good, that was easier than I thought, he said, crouching down to Eureka. That leg doesn't look good, hold on. Ring scan and diagnose a beam of green scanned over Eureka's leg. Analysis complete, identified broken ankle vital signs are normal. Risk to life low, advice to move to secure location and apply first aid. Thanks Ring, now let's get that leg out from under there. Izuka created a green car jack and began to lift the piece of building off of her. Thanks said Eureka as she tried to get up. Hold on what are you doing? Eureka looked at him. You have a broken ankle don't try to walk on it you'll just make it worse. Pointing the ring at her, Izuka created a stretcher. Just then multiple heroes landed surrounding Izuku, Green Lantern you're under arrest present Mike said. I just saved a bunch of your examines and this is how you treat me. Wow UA students must really have it rough here Izuku put his hands up in surrender. You just broke into the school. Do you actually believe we would just let you go, said Midnight. Yes. I mean, realistically I can just leave and you guys won't be able to stop me. The only reason I'm staying is because of her he said pointing at Eureka on the stretcher he created. She has a broken ankle and needs help. Let me take care of that son An old lady with a cane walked in between the heroes. I can heal her up no problem. I is that you recovery girl. Oh wow huge fan of your work by the way Izuku's eyes gleamed seeing her. The one and only now come let me heal her Izuku moved the scrither closer to recovery girl. Kissing Eureka on the leg she was instantly healed. Good you should rest my quirk uses your energy to heal so take it easy for a bit. Eureka nodded, alright now that's all done, I'll see everyone later. However before Izuku could fly away Cementos created a wall in front of him, you think we'll just let you go. Izuka created a giant jackhammer breaking the wall into pieces, I'm leaving. Wait a voice was heard, turning Izuka found a small mouse slash bear looking creature approaching along with a skinny man wearing an oversized suit. Who are you? asked Izuku. My name is Nizu, I am the principal here at UA and if it's alright with you I would like to have a few words with you if you have time that is he said politely. Is this some kind of trick? You're trying to lure me into some kind of trap aren't you? Izuku said, puzzled. Currently not I would never do that promise Nizu smiled. Yeah, I don't know you so I don't trust you. Maybe another day Izuku said, turning away. Very well then another day but how do we contact you? 
You can't I'll contact you when I feel like talking and with that Izuku jumped into the air leaving the heroes behind. Izuku returned to the orphanage where Sister Maria waited at the door, Izuku, she wrapped him in a hug. Welcome back, how'd it go? It went, really good Maria, I think I finally know what I want to do with my life, he said, pulling away from the hug. Really? That's great Izuku, you can tell me all about it later. Right now I need your help getting lunch ready for the kids said Maria. All right I'll go help you, let me just put back my stuff and I'll go right now. Going up to his room Izuku put his things away and went straight to the kitchen to help Maria prepare lunch for the kid. Once again there wasn't enough to go around so Izuku had a very small serving and let the kids have more. That night while everyone was asleep Izuku once again put on the ring and took to the skies but he had to make one stop before he went to fight crime. Yuriko was in her tiny apartment waiting for the cookies to bake when she heard a knock on the balcony's glass door. Looking over she saw Izuku waving at her, getting up to slid the door open. Hey. You actually came, come on in cookies are about ready. As Izuku walked in he noticed how empty her apartment looked, wow this is a nice place you got here. You think so I think it's rather small, she laughed nervously. Take a seat at the table. I'll grab you some tea. Her kitchen is about the size of my room, and she thinks this is small. Here Eureka handed Izuku a cup. Hope you like green tea. Thank you and yeah it's my favorite taking a sip Izuku noticed it tasted different. Wow this tastes really good. Really? It's just regular green tea. Anyway I just wanted to thank you again for saving me both times she said taking a seat across from him. No problem, sorry I didn't drop by like I said I would, Izuku said, taking another sip of his tea. It's fine really I'm sure you were busy the two awkwardly sat there not speaking for a good minute. So, when do you know if you got into UA? Izuku asked, breaking the silence. Oh I think they said in about a week. I've been meaning to ask what's your quirk? Yuriko asked. Don't have one, said Izuku. What don't have one? What about everything you did during the entrance exam, there's no way you did all that with no quirk Eureka practically jumped from her seat. No really I'm quirkless, my power comes from this ring Izuku held up his hand. It's a powerful weapon that can create anything, the only limitation being my own imagination. Tell me to make something, anything. Um what about a lighter Izuku pointed the ring towards the table and created a small green lighter. Eureka picked it up and to her surprise it actually worked. Alright how about an all might plushie. Izuku once again created exactly what she told, picking it up. Eureka felt how soft it was, wow and you can create anything you want. I need to be somewhat familiar with the object. But yes anything I want said Izuku letting the lighter and the all might plushie disappear. Wow, that is some amazing power. Why don't you become a hero instead of a vigilante, asked Eureka. That's a little hard to explain but simply put the ones who created the ring play by their own rules, rules that I have to follow. Plus I don't have the money for that. Said Izuku. I see, well regardless of what they label you. You will always be my hero she smiled. Izuku's eyes went wide when she said that, imaginings of Bakugo and All Might telling him that he couldn't be a hero played over and over in his head. And now this girl just told him that he a quirkless boy was her hero, Izuku's heart broke, T thank you, you don't know how many people said I couldn't be a hero. So thank you tears fell from his face. H hey now don't cry Eureka said panicked not knowing what to do in this situation, just then she heard a ding. Oh the cookies, running towards the oven she brought the tray to the table. Here have some they will cheer you up. Taking one Izuku took a bite, thank you suddenly his mood changed. Wow these are even better than last time. Eureka chuckled, I would hope so, they aren't burnt this time. Izuku stuck around for a little while longer to just hang out and chat, the more he did Izuku could feel something building in his heart. After a while Izuku looked at the time and decided it was time to go back into the city. 
Sorry about this Eurica but I should go check on the city before heading home. No I get it, go and keep the city safe Izuku nodded and walked towards the balcony. Oh right, here Izuku created a small pager with a button. A pager. Eurica looked at the green pager confused. Yup if you're ever in trouble or in danger just press the button and I'll be there said Izuku. Really? That's really thoughtful of you Izuku blushed. Anyway make sure to always keep it on you. Bye Izuku jumped into the air still red faced. Bye GL, I'll see you soon she waved as he left towards the city. After a long night of taking some thugs Izuku went back to the orphanage but little did he know just outside of Earth's atmosphere multiple different colored rings floated around trying to find a new host. The great danger that the Guardian said that would happen on Earth was fast approaching. It has now been two weeks since he saved Eureka from the giant robot, it was only one week ago that she started school at UA yet she still found the time to wave Izuku down as he flew across the city to have some cookies and chat. The night before Eureka had told him that today they were going to practice rescues in different environments. Izuku was bored out of his mind in his room, he spent the night saving a sinking fishing ship off the coast of Japan. Man I'm bored he said laying on his bed. Just then there was a knock on the door, Izuku you in there, it was Maria. Yeah Maria opening the door she walked in. What's up? I was wondering if you'd help shop from groceries she said putting her hands together. Sure, give me a second. I'll meet you downstairs Izuku said smiling. Awesome thank you Izuku closing the door Maria went to get her bag. Izuku went to his desk and pulled the drawer revealing the green lantern ring, I better take this just to be safe taking the ring he put it in his pocket. After getting changed Izuku walked down the stairs to find Maria in a white sundress, Izuku's eyes went wide when he saw her. W what? Does it look strange on me? Maria asked, covering her embarrassed face. And no you look amazing it's just I've never seen you without your nun outfit Izuku snapped out of the trance he was in. You really think so? Yeah I wasn't too sure about wearing this but since I'm still not a full-fledged nun I can still wear stuff like this. Well enough of that let's go she said grabbing him by the arm and leading him outside. With Eureka. Eureka was getting along with her classmates, well everyone but a certain kid called Bakugo. He was too hot-headed to even approach, today they were going to a place called the USJ to train in rescue. After arriving Eureka was starstruck when she saw her favorite hero 13 was one of the teachers who was going to be helping them. Eureka kept the pager that Izuku had given her, in the pouch of her hero costume. You never know when I might need this, plus he did say to always keep it on me. That's when things started to take a turn for the worse, alright everyone that will be all, we are now going to split you up and assign you an environment. Eraser head, also known as Izawa explained when he felt something behind him. Turning around he noticed a black portal opening up in the middle of the USJ. Sir what is that? asked the electro user Kaminari. More bots? No, those are villains. Izawa said getting in front of the children. Shouldn't UA have security systems in place, the speedster known as Itza said shocked. We do but they must have someone disable them said 13. Izawa looked at his class, everyone you need to get out of here, 13 protect the students he said, putting down his goggles. Sir what are you going to do, your quirk works stealth not one on one fights Eurica said voicing her concern. Here's your first lesson, a hero is not a one trick pony and with that Izawa jumped towards the swarm of bad guys. Alright everyone let's get out of here 13 said ushering the kids to the door but he was quickly stopped by one of the villains. We wouldn't want you to leave so soon, the villain known as Kurojiri said, getting in front of the students and the door. We have a job today and we are going to do it so I would appreciate it if you don't leave until this is over. Kurojiri was interrupted by 13 as she activated her quirk black hole, trying to suck up Kurojiri himself, now everyone run, she ordered. Not so fast Kurojiri opened a warp gate in front of him and one behind 13, causing her quirk to shred her costume and back. This caused 13 to fall to the ground bleeding from her back. 
the everyone run. She said before falling unconscious. Now that the teacher is out of the picture it's time I do my job before Kurojiri could do anything else Bakugo and Kiri's Hima jumped at him quirks at the ready. However they soon found out that their attacks did nothing. How rude, now be gone. A black mist began to cover the students, sending them away to different locations, Eureka and a few others were lucky enough to escape the portal and were now face to face with the villain. Well it seems some of you are still here, Shigaraki will be very displeased if you manage to escape Kurojiri said about to activate his quirk again. That's when Eureka noticed something, when he activates his quirk that metal part stays in place. That must mean he has a body somewhere in there. Guys aim for that metal thing. If my guess is correct that's his weakness, running in Eureka managed to touch the metal part, making him float into the air. Aitsa now run for it. Go call for the teachers. Hesitating for a second Aitsa stood in place not knowing what to do, he was the class rep, he should be here fighting instead of running. Aitsa, what are you doing move, hearing Eureka yell made him snap out of it and run towards the door. Managing to get free Aitsa ran as fast as he could towards the main campus that was a few miles away. No. Shigaraki is not going to be happy about this he turned to the group of students. You, he yelled looking at Eureka. You are coming with me opening a portal underneath her Eureka fell through and landed in front of Shigaraki and the Nomua. Oh what's this? Shigaraki said. A new plaything for Nomua. Eureka looked around to find Izawa face down on the floor, blood everywhere. Mr. Izawa. Shigaraki forgive me but one of the students managed to escape, explained Kurojiri. However I did bring the one who came up with the plan. You are lucky that you are our way out of here Shigaraki said, scratching his neck. We should get out of here before the heroes come, but first why don't we leave All Might a few bodies. Shigaraki grabbed Eureka by the neck with two fingers, you don't know this but my quirk allows me to disintegrate anything I touch as long as I have five fingers on what I want to disintegrate slowly he put finger after finger on her neck. And no please no. Eureka was too scared to do anything as the third finger gripped her neck. Wait the pager. I need to reach the pager, the fourth finger, Eureka struggled to reach the pouch on her belt, come come reach. Then to her horror she felt the fifth finger just as she grabbed the pager, you really are amazing aren't you eraser head Eureka looked over to her side to find Izawa looking at Shigaraki with red glowing eyes. Now's my chance. Eureka pressed the button on the pager. Enough of this Shigaraki threw Eureka to the side. Noma deal with him, then kill the girl the Noma grabbed Izawa by the hair and slammed his head to the pavement with enough force to break it. Sliding on the floor, Eureka watched as the giant Noma crushed Izawa's skull, then changed its attention to her. Slowly it began to walk towards her claws at the ready to finish her off, please Green Lantern, help me. The Nomu let out a loud roar as it swiped down with its massive claws, closing her eyes Eureka heard the roar followed by something the sound of glass breaking, then nothing. Opening her eyes Eureka saw the glow of green in front of her, hey Eureka sorry I'm late Izuku turned and smiled at Eureka. With Izuku a few moments ago. Izuku and Maria were walking out of the grocery with their hands full of groceries, Wow I can't believe we had enough to buy this much Izuku said carrying boxes full of food. Yeah, thanks to those donations you brought we were able to save some money. Anyway come on let's head back Maria said. As the two walked down the street Maria looked at Izuku, Hey Izuku is there anything you want to tell me? What do you mean Maria? Izuku said, raising an eyebrow. I mean you come back from your little trip and you have a different aura, it's almost like you're a totally different person Izuku started to get nervous. Could it be, you got a girlfriend? Izuku stumbled when he heard this, W what, no I don't. What makes you think I did? I don't know just this gut feeling, come Izuku you can tell me Maria teased him. Izuku turned red, W well I did meet someone. I knew it. What's her name? Maria sounded excited. Okako Eureka, we met a while back and we've been talking ever since, 
he said. Oh my little Izuku is growing up and here I thought you were going to end up alone Maria said laughing. Hey that's not nice, said Izuku. Sorry sorry, well anyway just make sure to be careful alright Midoriya. Love is a complicated thing and can make you do some crazy things. Listen to your heart but also remember to think about what you're doing her voice turned so serious. Whoa she almost never calls me Midoriya, only when I'm in trouble or about to get lectured Izuku smiled. I know Maria, I promise I'll be careful. Just then Izuku's ring began to beep and flash green, oh no that's the signal for the pager I gave Eureka, she must be in danger. Izuku what is that? Maria said, pointing at his pocket. Oh that's. Izuku knew there was no getting out of this. Listen I think it's about time you found out. Come with me Izuku pulled Maria to a nearby alley out of the sight of anyone. Putting down the boxes Izuku took out the ring and slid it on. As soon as he did his uniform began to appear on him. I Izuku you're him. You're the Green Lantern Maria dropped the bags of groceries. Yes I am, look I'll explain everything when I get back. Right now Eureka needs me. Ring, where is Eureka? Izuku said, asking the ring. Located, USJ approximately 15 miles from your location Izuku nodded and was about to take off when Maria stopped him. Izuku wait he turned to her. Be careful. I will Maria Izuku created a wagon to help her take the groceries back to the orphanage and with that done he took off into the sky at a high rate of speed. USJ. So who are these guys? Izuku said, pointing at the giant beast that laid below a bunch of ruble. Those are villains they broke into the school, said Eureka. You bastard what did you do to Nomu? We need him to kill all might Shigaraki looked at Izuku. Wait I know you, yeah you're that vigilante everyone is talking about. Yeah that's me, the name's Green Lantern. Now I don't really appreciate you hurting my friend the ring started to glow brighter. Izuk fired a green beam of energy at Shigaraki. Suddenly there was a loud roar and a flash of green, Izuku looked back where Noma was to find it gone, looking back he noticed it was now in front of Shigaraki. Nice try but with the Nomu here you won't be able to touch me. I see then why don't I do this firing another beam Izuku at the Nomu, creating a solid net covering most of his body. Now he won't be able to move. Shigaraki smiled, are you sure about that? The Nomu began to growl as cracks began to form around the net. Izuku focused harder on maininging it but every time the Nomu increased his strength trying to break free, He's getting stronger Izuku grabbed his wrist to support himself. Nomu break out, Shigaraki ordered. With a roar the Nomu flexed, breaking out of the net sending pieces of green construct flying. I am possible Izuku put up his hands trying to shield himself from the broken constructs, looking up he saw Nomu appear right in front of him pulling his arm back. SH asterisk T thinking fast Izuku created a bubble around himself as the hit connected. The impact was so great that it forced Izuku to the ground, his bubble shield breaking the ground and causing a crater. Man he's strong he said rubbing the back of his head. Green Lantern look out. Eureka yelled as Nomu jumped at Izuku. With a double fist strike Nomu hit the shield repeatedly, Izuku focused hard as he saw cracks appear. Lifting his fists up high, Nomu brought them down, breaking Izuku's bubble shield causing an explosion of green energy. In the crater Izuku laid seemingly unconscious with half of his mask ripped off and his face bruised, very good Nomu now finish him off. GL no. Eureka yelled as Nomu's claws bared down on Izuku. Suddenly the sound of gunfire was heard, Izuku had created a M16 shooting Nomu filling him with holes. Ha got you the Nomu backed away bleeding from the gunshot wounds. Oh no N-O-M-U. Izuku smiled as Shigaraki yelled shocked at what happened and smiled. Is that what you wanted me to say? Well tough luck, super strength isn't his only power you know. Izuku watched as the holes began to close, he has regeneration. Oh come on that's not fair Izuku switched it up and created a M124 minigun. 
The green bills hit the monster but it seemed to do very little as it walked towards Izuku slowly but surely. Seeing that the Noma was now in close range Izuku created two swords, slicing at its ankles causing it to fall forward. Seeing his chance Izuku jumped up and stabbed Nomu in the back. As it screeched out in pain it quickly turned around swatting Izuku away. Hovering Izuku wiped the blood off of his lip, damn he's still not going down. Die, a voice yelled out followed by a large explosion. Izuku knew who it was right away as flashbacks when he was a kid played inside his mind. Bakugo managed to hit the Nomu with one of his explosions knocking him back, that's when he noticed, who the hell are you? I'm Green Lantern, listen. I appreciate you helping me but this one is mine Izuku said, which only pissed off Bakugo. What the hell did you say? Bakugo yelled out but was cut off when the Nomu let out a loud roar. That voice I've heard it before. You can yell at me all you want later right now let's take care of this thing Izuku created a suit of armor complete with a sword and shield around himself. At least that's something we can both agree on, Bakugo said as explosions rippled in his hands. Oh you want to fight Nomu? Very well, alright Nomu time to show them why we made you to kill All Might with the wave of his hand the Nomu ran towards them even faster than before. Izuku saw the Nomu disappear then reappear behind Bakugo and raise his hand, watch out. Izuku threw himself at Bakugo and raised his construct shield to defend him. But the shield proved to be no match for the giant fist, shattering the shield the Nomu picked Izuku up by the neck and began to choke him. Struggling to breath Izuku raised the sword and jammed it into its arm. Screeching in pain, Nomu let go of Izuku but before falling to the floor he managed to punch Izuku, shattering the breastplate on the suit of armor which sent Izuku flying to a nearby tree. You bastard! Bakugo yelled as he jumped in and fired a full-powered explosion at the Nomu. As the smoke disappeared Bakugo was shocked to see Nomu still standing, I am possible, he doesn't have a scratch using his explosions Bakugo dodged most of Nomu's attacks but they still managed to scratch him. Izuku sat up against the tree, all right Izuku, we saw how charging in got you. Why don't you think first? Ring power at 20%, recommend immediate recharge the ring warned him. Great, now I'm almost out of power, I need to think of something fast. Izuku watched the Nomu fight Bakugo, he analyzed, thought back, trying to look for any weak points. That's when he remembered something, that's it. He obeys the hand guy, if I take him out he shouldn't act on his orders anymore looking over at Shigaraki, Izuku noticed he wasn't paying attention. Rushing at Shigaraki, Izuku managed to tackle and pin his hands making sure they didn't touch him, putting a straight jacket on him. Izuku looked at the Nomu. Hey ugly. The Nomu stopped attacking Bakugo and looked at Izuku, if you want your boss here to live I suggest you stop Izuku made the jacket tighter which caused Shigaraki to yell in pain. That goes for you too he pointed at Kurojiri without looking. Both the Nomu and Kurojiri stopped, all right, all right easy. We'll do what you want Kurojiri said, looking at the Nomu and giving it a nod. Just don't hurt him. That's more like it, you have two choice, LST is to take your monster and open a portal and walk away. Second option is I beat the hell out you and honestly I really hope you choose the second option Izuku said, holding on to Shigaraki. Actually there's a third option Nomu took a swing at the air but suddenly a black portal opened in front of him just big enough for this first to fly through. Kurojiri had opened another portal in front of Izuku's face. With no time to react Izuku saw the giant fist appear from the portal, hitting Izuku square in the head sending him flying. GL Yuriraka yelled out as he slid to a stop, not moving. Bakugo's eyes went wide when he saw what happened. The straight jacket around Shigaraki disappeared, well you certainly caught me by surprise he said getting up. But it seems you are still no match for the Nomu he said walking towards Izuku. Damn it, still alive I see. Bakugo we need to help him. Yuriraka yelled out. Bakugo nodded but as they tried to run towards him the Nomu jumped in front of them stopping their advancement. Man you are annoying Shiegarki started to kick Izuku's side. 
Why don't you just roll over and die? After this I'm going to take this Nomu and have some fun around the school. So many students, so many bodies kick after kick he delivered breaking a rib on the last one. What scared everyone the most was the fact that Shigaraki was laughing the whole time. Throughout the USJ the students could feel their blood run cold, that laugh was something straight from a nightmare. Even those at the entrance stepped back in fear. Ring power level 10%. Out in space. The rings floated just above Earth, suddenly the yellow colored ring began to glow. New host has been found, scanning for location, identified, Japan in a yellow streak the ring flew towards the ground. USJ. W what do we do? Kiri's Hima asked as he stood in front of his class near the entrance. We have to go help the green guy. Mina said but couldn't move out of fear. Why won't my body move? Come legs move. Todoroki said yelling at his legs to move but the fear kept him in place. Suddenly a large explosion was heard behind them, it's alright students, there's no need to worry anymore why? Because I am here. All Might had joined the fight. All Might, they all yelled. Thank goodness you're safe students that's when he saw 13 laying on the ground, looking around he noticed three people missing, listen to me, the other heroes are going to be here any moment so stay here. I'll go save Izawa and the others. Going to the edge of the stairs he saw two of his students, and in the future he saw someone getting beat up. In an instant All Might appeared in front of Bakugo and Eureka. Get behind me kids. All Might. Bakugo yelled out, causing Shigaraki to stop beating on Izuku. Well if it isn't All Might, so you finally come to play Shigaraki said, whipping his shoe of Izuku's blood. You bastard. Faster than Shigaraki could track him, All Might got Izuku and Izawa, putting him down beside Eureka and Bakugo. Take the two and head towards the entrance, the rest of the class is there waiting. Eureka used her quirk on the barely conscious Izuku and Bakugo carried Izawa over his shoulder, A hey, All Might, wait. Ring analyzes quirks Izuku raised his hand and pointed at the Nomu. Quirks identified, super regeneration and shock absorption the ring answered as Izuku passed out. Thanks kid. I'll handle things from here now get moving you two they nodded and began to run towards the entrance with Izuku and Izawa in tow. He may not be one of my students but he has the heart of a true hero. It's time to pay villains. Nomu get him, ordered Shigaraki, Nomu ran towards All Might at full speed. As the two clashed a shockwave was felt throughout the USJ. Entrance. Bakugo and Izawa were the first to reach the entrance, then followed by Eureka and Izuku. Guys you're all right. Mina said, happy to see her classmates. Wait who that, she asked. This is Green Lantern, he saved me from the Nomu Eureka said deactivating her quirk and putting him down gently. He's the vigilante everyone's been talking about. He's so young, probably no older than us Kiri's Hima said looking over Izuku. Suddenly there was a yell coming from the center of the USJ, where All Might was fighting that thing. Everyone rushed over to see All Might getting pulled into the portal by the Nomu, oh no. Eureka yelled out. If they close the portal while he's in it. She paused at the thought of what could happen. Out of the way. Todoroki pushed Eureka out of the way, activating his ice. The ice traveled far until it reached the Nomu freezing the hand that had the grip on All Might. With its grip now loosened All Might managed to break free, but held his weak spot. Thank you young Todoroki. All Might yelled out. Man this guy is tough I need to finish this fast, my time is running out. Nice work Todoroki said Momo. I it won't be enough everyone turned to find Izuku had gotten up, and was limping toward them. Green Lantern. You shouldn't be moving Eureka said, running to his side. Thank but I'll be fine, it's all might I'm worried about. That thing was designed to kill him if this goes on any longer he's going to die Izuku said looking at the fight. Is there anything we can do, asked Toru the invisible girl. Izuku looked back at everyone, I know you're all scared but I need you to trust me. 
This fight is going to be over soon to the surprise of everyone they felt a wave of calm befall them. They didn't know why but GL's words were calming. This short moment of tranquility was interrupted by a large boom followed by a strong gust of wind. Looking back All Might had taken a huge hit from Nomu, it was now or never Izuku had to act. Everyone stay back, I'm going back in, he said, taking off. GL wait. You should move, your injuries. Yurika tried to warn him but it was too late. Like a green bullet Izuku flew towards All Might to back him up. All Might was breathing hard, his weak spot was bleeding, and his time was running out. He needed to do something, he watched as Nomu once again charged him, putting up his guard All Might braced for the impact. Suddenly a green beam of energy shot across him barely missing his head and hitting Nomu. What the? Turning around All Might saw Izuku heading his way, looks like you need some help All Might. Me? What about you, you're just as damaged as I am All Might said wiping the blood from his lip. Didn't think I would see you again, well at least not here. Yeah, funny how things turn out. Look he has shock absorption right? You think you can overclock his absorption? Izuku asked. Yeah I can do it. You said his quirk was shock absorption not nullification, that means he has a limit on how much he can take All Might smiled looking at the villains. Good, once you feel he's reached his limit leave the rest to me. In the meantime I'll make sure they don't interfere Izuku said, looking at Shigaraki and Kurojiri. Very well let's go. All Might jumped in to fight the Nomu once again. Izuku on the other hand powered up once again. Tell me why are you two doing this? Izuku asked, trapping the two villains in a box. We do this to rid the world of All Might. Kurojiri created a portal underneath them and popped out in front of the green box. But right now my objective is to kill you, he said running at Izuku. I see, in that case. Izuku dropped his hand as Shigaraki lunged at Izuku ready to disintegrate him. I don't need my ring to fight you ducking underneath his hand Izuku elbowed Shigaraki hard in the stomach. Did you only think my ring was the only weapon I had? I don't need to solely rely on the ring, the guardians, and Kilowog trained me in hand-to-hand -hand combat. That was the one area I excelled in. As Shigaraki fell to his knees, a strong gust of wind was felt. Izuku turned to find All Might punching the Nomu so fast and hard that he managed to lift him off the ground. Green Lantern, do it now. All Might yelled. With pleasure. Izuku rocketed towards the Nomu tackling it and he pushed it higher and higher. Sorry to do this to you big guy but if we leave you alive you'll just hurt people later, so now you die. Izuku constructed a large drill that dug into the Nomu's chest. As it reeled in pain Izuku pushed harder, faster the drill spun until finally it pierced the Nomu. Coming out the other side, Izuku floated in the air as it fell to the ground. As it did, the monster split into two halves and fell beside Shigaraki dead. All Might and the students looked on in shock at what Izuku just did, H he just killed that thing. Kirishima said. Yuriko herself saw surprised by the fact that he'd do something like that, W.Y., there had to be a reason to kill it. All Might himself was in shock at what Izuku did, as the body hit the floor he could see the now core of the Nomu. Green Lantern. Why did you do that? He yelled out. Izuku floated down in front of All Might, what? I took care of the problem, what's the big deal? You just killed it? All Might shot back. Izuku turned to the body and back to All Might. Yeah. He's not getting the message. There was no reason to kill that thing. All Might thought looking at Izuku with a stern look. You Shigaraki voice broke through the face down Izuku was having. That was a present from my master. Suddenly everyone in the USJ could feel the bloodlust leaking out of Shigaraki. I'm going to make you pay for what you did. Go ahead and try it. You'll end up just like that monster Izuku said as his ring began to glow. GL that's enough, in the blink of an eye All Might appeared in front of Izuku. Raising his hand, All Might slapped Izuku across the face sending him crashing towards the ground. 
Gah! What the hell all might? Izuku said getting blood dripping from his lip. You won't kill anyone anymore. All Might said standing over Izuku. Narrowing his eyes, Izuku slowly got up, is that what this is about? If I hadn't killed him he would have just come back and then what? Would you leave him to other heroes to handle? Not everyone is as strong as you are All Might. I took one life to save countless others. There are always other ways. If he did show up again we could have handled him. All Might rerouted. One hundred people? Five hundred? No, maybe ten comma zero zero zero. Izuku said, staring at All Might. What? How many people would have died if he was allowed to leave, said Izuku. All Might choked on his words, T that's not the problem here. We could have avoided it. Yeah? How many people do you think they can kill? Izuku pointed at Shigaraki and Kurojiri. One has the power to disintegrate things just by touching them, the other can open portals. As the two were arguing something crashed into the USJ, everyone looked up to see something yellow in color float down towards Shigaraki. Tamura Shigaraki of Planet Earth. You have the ability to instill great fear. Izuku's eyes widened when he saw what it was, no. Izuku pointed his ring at Shigaraki and was about to blast him when All Might jumped in and grabbed his arm. I said enough. All Might gripped down on Izuku causing him to scream. Let me go. You don't understand if he gets that ring it will mean certain doom, then it happened. Welcome to the Sinestro Corps reaching out, Shigaraki grabbed the ring. When he did, the entire USJ was filled with yellow light. As the light disappeared there stood Shigaraki, in black and yellow suit, and the Sinestro Corps logo on his chest. What is this? So much power Shigaraki looked at himself. F asterisk CK, letting out an energy wave Izuku pushed All Might away from him, and fired a blast of green energy at Shigaraki. Shigaraki didn't even flinch as he created a shield blocking the energy, interesting, this ring is a different color but it has the same powers you have. Kurojiri get us out of here, I want to do some testing. Kurojiri created a portal and warped the two of them out of the USJ. The fight was over, for now at least. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Izuku yelled out cursing at the ground. He has a ring now Izuku began to calm down. Ring power at 3%. I need to get out of here and think about my next move Izuku began to take to the sky but was grabbed by the leg. What the, looking down Izuku saw All Might holding his ankle. And just where do you think you're going young man? All Might pulled and threw Izuku to the floor so hard that it broke. There are things you need to answer for. But right now Izuku wasn't having none of it, getting up Izuku created restraint spinning All Might to a nearby wall by the neck, arms, and legs. You, you're the reason they got away. If you hadn't stopped me I could have stopped him. All Might tried breaking free of the restraints but found that they wouldn't even move, innocent people are going to die and it's going to be your fault. Suddenly Eureka and Bakugo appeared behind Izuku, GL, let him go, please Eureka yelled. Looking back Izuku saw their faces, just before letting him go three shots rang out. Doting out of the way Izuku was grazed on the shoulder, causing blood to drip from his arm. They're here. At the entrance Itza had come back with reinforcements, every teacher in UA was now standing at the entrance of the USJ. Izuku fell to one knee, damn it. Just then Yuriku rushed to his side and whispered, go to my apartment, I'll help you treat your injuries. Izuku looked at her and nodded, releasing all might. This is far from over, expect to hear from me soon and with that Izuku took off breaking the ceiling and leaving the USJ. Izuku flew over the city, bleeding from his injuries, H he has a yellow ring, I need to find him that's when Izuku felt a sharp pain to his shoulder almost causing him to fall out of the sky. Lucky he regained his control before he crashed to the floor, placing his hand where he felt the pain. Izuku noticed that his hand was now covered in blood. Not good, I took too much damage from that fight. 
Ring power 1% The ring notified him. I need to hurry Izuku pushed himself to go faster, he wasn't that far away. Landing on the balcony Izuku noticed the sliding glass door was closed and locked. Creating a lockpick the ring began to unlock the door, after a second he heard a click signaling the door was now open. As soon as he had one step in the door he collapsed succumbing to his injuries. With Eureka. It was now an hour since the fight as the USJ and the principal allowed them to leave campus early and even gave them a few days off. Man that was scary Mina said as class 1A walked off campus. I know right but at least they gave us these extra days off said Kiri's Hima. We were also lucky All Might and that Green Lantern guy showed up, Ribbit. Although I still don't agree with killing that thing Tsu said thinking back to the USJ. Eureka however was silent, why did he kill that thing? There had to be a good reason. For now I need to hurry home, he probably needs help that's when she turned to her class. Sorry guys I have to hurry back home, my parents are coming by later. I'll make sure to text you all, bye, she said waving at them as she ran towards the train station. The class waved, hey, did you guys find it weird that Green Lantern appeared and protected Okako, asked Mina. Now that you mention it, I did find it kinda weird Momo said. She's hiding something. I'm going to find out what. I know I heard that voice before. Bakugo said, breaking off from his class. Getting off at her stop Eureka quickly stopped at a convenience store and bought some first aid to treat GL's injuries. Opening the door to the apartment, at first she didn't see him, that is until she went to the living room and found a young boy lying on the floor unconscious. GL, she said running to him. Flipping him over on his back she noticed the blood dripping down his arm, finding the source she quickly ripped his shirt and applied a streal pad stopping the bleeding. Then she moved down feeling at his sides, when she got to his ribs he let out a wince of pain. His ribs are probably broken, she said, removing the rest of his shirt. When she did, she was taken back by the enormous bruise. There's not much I can do about the bruising but I can stabilize his ribs carefully Eureka wrapped Izuku midsection with bandage wrap. She then moved on to disinfecting his open wounds and bandaging them up, after she was done she had burned through all the supplies she bought. At least you look better now. I should move him to the sofa, laying on the floor must be uncomfortable she said, activating her quirk on him, she moved him to the sofa. Going back to pick up trash she noticed a green colored ring, what is this? It must be his, I'll hold onto it until he wakes up. Inside Izuku head. Izuku opened his eyes to find himself floating in an empty void, W what where am I? Oh god did I die? Izuku began to panic, but suddenly the empty void turned green in color, turning around Izuku saw the source of the glow. There standing before him was a young girl around his age, skin glowing green and wearing a green dress. W who are you? he asked, walking closer to her. Izuku, it's time for you to wake up she said pointing to the sky. That voice, I've heard before on OA suddenly there was a light shining on Izuku that came down from above. He could feel it pull him, wait I have questions, tried as he may Izuku couldn't escape the pull from the light. The last thing Izuku saw was the girl whispering something and with that Izuku woke up from his dream. Wait, he yelled, scaring Yuriko who was in the kitchen making dinner. Rushing to his side Eureka noticed he was breathing hard and sweating, hey look me it's okay you're safe. Izuku looked around and noticing he was in her apartment he began to calm down, t thanks. Eureka nodded, no problem gl, how are you feeling? Izuku tried sitting up but couldn't due to his ribs being broken, I'm good thanks to you that's when Izuku could feel his mask was gone. Panicked he began to touch his face, Looking down he noticed his GL uniform was gone, as well as as his ring, oh no she knows how I look like. You can relax, I won't tell anyone who you are she said pushing him back down onto the sofa. Why don't we try this again, my name is Okako Yuriko. Can I trust her? I mean she seems like a nice girl, and she did treat my wounds. 
until she gives me a reason not to, I'll trust her Izuku side. My name is Izuku Midoriya, you know me as Green Lantern. Thank you for looking out for me Eureka. Eureka shook her head, I should be thanking you. Remember you saved me and my class from that monster suddenly the sound of Izuku's stomach was heard. I'm guessing you're hungry. Izuku blushed, why yes sorry about that. Don't be, I was making dinner anyway. I hope you ramen, it's the only thing I can make right now she said as he tried to sit up. Easy now I don't want you hurting yourself any more than you are. Stay here I'll bring you the food. Izuku shook his head, thanks but I think I can manage he said trying to get up, managing to get to his feet but as soon as he tried to walk he collapsed. Lucky for him Eureka was close by and caught him for he hit the floor, on second thought never mind. That's what I thought, no go sit back down. I'll bring you your food right now Eureka said, going back to get the bowls of ramen. Izuku looked down at his hand to find the ring was missing, the ring it's gone. Putting the two bowls of ramen on a small table Eureka sat down beside him and pulled the ring out of her pocket, looking for this, she said holding up the ring. Here she said, handing it over to him. T thanks, he said, taking the ring and sliding it on. No problem, now eat while it's still hot she said slurping up some noodles. Izuku with one arm managed to eat with little trouble, after enjoying the ramen he thanked Eureka. Now that really hit the spot. You're telling me, after everything we went through at the USJ I needed this. Which reminds me. Why aren't you all green like how you were back when fighting the Nomua, she asked. To answer that you have to know my power comes from this ring. As to why I'm not all green it's because it ran out of battery so to say. I need to charge the ring every 24 hours or it just becomes a regular ring Izuku explained. I see, so do you need a wire or something to charge? Eureka asked, looking over the ring on his hand. Izuku chuckled, no nothing like that, as crazy as it may sound I need a special lantern that I have back at the orphanage. He froze when he said that word. Eureka's eyes went wide, orphanage? Why the orphanage? Izuku looked away, I it's cause I live there. Oh oh. Yeah. The air around them turned very awkward. So can I ask you something? Eureka said breaking the awkwardness. Sure go ahead, Izuku said, turning to her. Why did you kill that thing? You've never killed anyone until now she asked, wanting to know. I did it to protect you, protect your classmates, and protect others. Whatever that thing was, it wasn't going to stop. They could have locked it away sure but then you'll just be waiting for someone to break it out. The Green Lantern Corps taught me to deal with the enemy, and deal with it I did said Izuku. While I am grateful that you saved my class and my friends. The heroes won't let this slide, they will be coming after you. Eureka said with sadness in her voice. I know, that's why I'm going to speak with them, said Izuku, but he still saw that Eureka was worried. Don't worry I'll be fine, besides I don't answer to them, I answer to the guardians he said patting her head. She smiled, well as long as you're alright I won't stop you. On an unrelated note, how do you plan to go home? You're too injured to move. That's a good question, if the ring was charged I would be able to fly home, said Izuku looking at the drained ring. That's when Eureka got an idea. Why don't I go get that lantern thing you were talking about? A are you sure? You would do that for me Izuku said as his eyes gleamed. Yeah sure why not, it's the least I can do, you for saving me Eureka said getting up from the sofa. You live in the orphanage just outside the city right? Izuku nodded. Good I'll go right now, I'll be back in a bit. Try not to move around too much, the bathroom is down the hall on the right. The TV remote is on the table if you want to watch something she said getting ready. Thank you for doing this Eureka. Oh right before I forget the lantern is in my room, ask for sister Maria she'll show you to my room she nodded as she walked out the door. After a bus ride outside the city Eureka was finally at the gate of the orphanage, 
Wow this place is really run down. She said staring at the old building. After a few moments she decided to walk towards the door and knocked. Suddenly the door opened and out popped the two twins, Eureka was shocked she expected an adult to answer. Oh hi she said looking down at the twins. Hello, Lisa said. I is sister Maria here? I need to talk to her Eureka said. The twins looked at each other and without saying a word left Eureka, after a few seconds the twins came back with sister Maria. Hello miss, how can I help you? My name is Okako Eureka I am a friend of Midoriya before she could say anything else Maria grabbed her hands. So you're the girl Izuku told me about, Maria said with excitement in her voice. Why yeah that's me, actually sister I need to talk to you about Izuku is that all right, said Eureka. Yes, that's fine. Lisa, Levi, can you two give us a minute the twins nodded and went away. So what would you like to talk about? Oh Izuku needs me to get a lantern from his room, I know it sounds weird but he's at my place right now and needs it Eureka said. I see well if Izuku needs something, why didn't he come back here? Maria asked. Does she know who Izuku is? Wait, is Izuku injured? He went off to save her, what if he's hurt? Eureka began to get nervous, oh oh you see he, twisted his ankle and is resting at my place right now. A likely story. Let me ask you something. Do you know who Izuka really is? Maria said, testing Eureka. I I have no idea what you're talking about. Midoriya is my friend and I just want to help him out Eureka's voice turned serious. I see so you do know who he really is. So tell me what really happened said Maria crossing her arms. So I'm guessing you know he's Green Lantern, said Eureka, confirming. I do know, tell me what happened Eureka proceeded to tell Maria what happened. How Izuku saved her class from villains, how Izuku was badly injured, and how he needed the lantern to get home. After explaining everything Maria led Eureka to his room to get the lantern, there they found the lantern. Good now Izuku can get back here. Oh and don't worry about his injuries, I treated them the best I could Eureka said, holding the lantern. Before you go I want to tell you something Maria's voice turned serious. I don't know you or do I know what your motives are, and quite frankly you rub me the wrong way. That being said since you know Izuku's secret I will trust you, for now. Eureka turned to Maria with a face filled with determination, I owe Midoriya my life so I promise you, I will never tell anyone who he is. I don't much about him but I do know this. He is an amazing person who wants to do the right thing no matter what. Maria smiled, well I can see why Izuku likes you. Anyway you show head out and remember no telling anyone. As Eureka was about to leave a voice came from the window, oh leaving so soon? Why don't you tell me where the green lantern is before you leave? They two turned around and from the glass window to find two people floating outside the window, Shigaraki. Eureka said, jumping back. Crashing through the window the two figures touched down on the floor, that's right you don't know who I am. Please allow me to introduce myself, my name is Sinestro. Now tell me where the green lantern is Sinestro said as his ring glowed yellow. Maria stepped in front of Eureka, who are you? Like I said my name is Sinestro, leader of the Sinestro Corp. I am here to dispose of the new green lantern, so tell me where is he? Sinestro said as his yellow eyes sent fear into Maria's heart. We will never tell you. Eureka said, gripping the lantern. Is that so? Well I do have methods of getting what I want, for example I'm sure you know what Shigariki's quirk is don't you girl? It would be a real shame if something happened to this orphanage Sinestro said grinning. That's when Shigariki stepped up, tell me where he is. I have a score to settle Shigaraki said, disintegrating the table. Eureka stayed quiet, while Maria stood frozen in fear. We are getting nowhere, Shigaraki do me a favor and kill everyone in this building. We will find the lantern soon enough Sinestro said, turning his back on the two girls. Shigaraki face twisted into a smile, 
with pleasure the ring around his finger glowed and created a bomb with a timer that read 10 seconds. Eureka and Maria's eyes went wide, turning to the door the two ran as the timer read 8 seconds, everyone run. Maria said running down the hall, as she did she saw the twins and picked them up. Eureka ran in front of Maria, no no this can't be happening, why is Shigaraki here? That's when her eyes went wide in realization. D did they follow me? No that couldn't be, then how? Two seconds. As Eureka ran the lantern power battery began to glow in her arms. Before she could do anything Eureka was engulfed in a green light and teleported away along with the battery, leaving Maria and everyone else in the orphanage behind. Eureka's Apartment Izuka laid on the couch watching some TV when all of a sudden the room was covered in a green glow. As the glow disappeared he saw Eureka and the power battery, you Eureka? How did you? He was cut off when Eureka pushed the battery to his chest, Midoriya quick, as Shigariki is at the orphanage and he has a bomb. There's another. Izuka's eyes went wide, suddenly there was an explosion that shook the building, and no Eureka's voice was shallow. Grabbing the power battery Izuku slid on the ring and placed the ring on the battery, in brightest day, in blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worship evil's might, beware my power, green lantern's light. Wearing his uniform once again Izuku took off at top speed towards the orphanage, pushing past the pain of his injuries that were still not healed.